Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily and in this playthrough I'm going to do hardcore difficulty in the default Neolithic timeline. In this playthrough I'm first and foremost going to show you step by step how to quickly get your camp up and running while also getting housing for all and taking care of farms and all maintenance. This hotfix is very rich with changes and I'm going to go through some of them along with a few of the hotfixes we've had since the belief patch was released. The game has changed drastically and it has now been increased in difficulty to be ready for release and the intent is to get the players used to the real hardcore our ancestors faced but without forgetting that new players will need somewhere to learn the mechanics and gameplay without being hammered by the hostile and difficult environment. As they become more proficient in the game, they can move on to expert and then to hardcore. So with the new gameplay challenge mode, we need to use different tactics and definitely very increased efficiency if we wish to succeed in any hardcore setting. We can no longer twiddle our thumbs and a lot of the time we must instead use all tricks and methods in order to get things to run smoothly. I will of course also do the beginners mode but as a play along for the very new players and then later the expert mode as a normal playthrough for those of us with a little bit more experience. I will cover approximately 5 years of each era and will also show you some recovery tips if you are in trouble with the maintenance. And now let's get started. <laughs> We are going to start in Hardcore, we are going to do Neolithic Default Timeline and also Default Season. Let's go! Okay, so what we need to first do is to make sure that we are basically aiming to land very very close to where we initially want to be and then uh, just don't spend a lot of time on getting to where you want to be as short as possible because we do need all the time to build each and every moment we need we cannot waste anything so if you are too far away from where you want to settle restart your game and then aim closer to where you want to be that's rule number one so i have six females in my tribe so there won't be a ton of uh, pregnancies that's for sure unless i get a lot of migrants of course that are female the migrants have been increased while pregnancies has been reduced. The reason they have been reduced is that when you reach a certain population they tend to be explosively many. You get like a 150 increase in population from one in-game year to the next. That's me exaggerated to make a point but that was an issue. So yeah let's um, quickly get done what we need. What we need to focus on is always and foremost in hardcore comfort for as many as possible in a shortest amount of time. So I am going to show you how you can get down all three pelt hats that you're allowed to have in Neolithic unless you have treasures. Get down three um, fireplaces but only one of the large ones because we cannot gather a, a million stone. I'm not sure we can manage that with this this tribe. So three fireplaces, two offerings and three pelt hats. And uh, we are only going to create the groups that are actually going to gather the materials that we need to get these items that we're placing down now built. So let's get that done. Um, all these that I've placed now, I would like to have done today before sleep time. Okay, so let's get um, down the groups. We're not going to fill them all. We're just going to do those that actually will come home with the materials that we need to make everything we've built or everything we place down built today. So I'm going to fiddle a bit with the uh, build policies as well. So, okay, and you, stone, oops, I can just as well do a hundred while we're at it. Of course, you will need it for stone graves. You cannot build simple graves in hardcore Neolithic. It is only stones. So that immediately makes it a lot harder. Uh, I don't necessarily need these, but I'll uh, I'll get them down anyway. So that's done. Uh, 
Right. So there has been a lot of changes since the belief patch. Um, all the hotfixes has given something new and some changes, some subtle, some very uh, visible and noticeable. Uh, what they have done, which uh, everyone will notice, is the reduction of work spots in the work groups. So they have taken it down to the original 14. And the reason for this is that with this new game challenge and with the difficulty that has been overall increased, no matter beginner, expert or hardcore, you will not get a very, very high population. Hence, there is absolutely no need for you to have a 35 work spot group. You do, however, have a straw for the Neolithic era, and that is that your farmers can now go up to 35. They are staying, so that means that you can easily get your farmers to the amount that you need to support between 150 and 200 people. Um, the soft cap is a lot lower now than it used to be. It used to be around 200, 250 for most players, but now it is roughly 100 if you manage 150 on hardcore you're, you're doing well you're doing well then so yeah so now that everything is built i'm going to take down the work hours again because i don't want them to wake up in the morning with increased work hours because that will make them a very very grumpy so the thing with hardcore is that everything is like 75 percent harder than the original um, or the beginners so normal is uh, the the difficulty that the devs are aiming to be what the overall game should be beginners is mostly for people who want either a really easy game or for very new players that that need to get the hang of how the game actually works hardcore yeah it's for those that actually knows a little bit what they're doing and for those who, who are perhaps tired of expert and want some extra challenge so it is roughly 75 percent harder than original beginners or what we used to have as normal and uh, everything is basically heavily reduced your food is reduced all your materials is reduced out in the wild your people are 10 times more angry and much more demanding and uh, yeah you, you really need to have uh, some insight into the game before you can actually succeed long term in any of the hardcore settings it's four times faster yeah so one sleep is now one month you do know what that means and <laughs> that means that we can't hang around with making our farms. We need to get them down basically before winter sets in. Because if winter sets in and we have no farms, we are sitting ducks for famine. Absolutely no doubt about it. Let there be no doubt about it. In hardcore, if you do not get up your farms in time, you will have issues. Because the food after starter feast, which is always year zero and tipping over to year one, is always rich everywhere, even in hardcore. But production years after that are very, very diminished. So you cannot rely on having a 50 plus tribe and no farms. That is not going to work. You're going to have to migrate constantly. If you're doing like that in the Neolithic era, you have to migrate like once or twice a year. It's seriously, seriously bad to not have farms. So now I have everything up. So I'm just going to finish everything, done all the groups. See, yeah. There's also a new achievement. If you are so unlucky that you are choosing to not migrate when the game is telling you that you are about to be flooded by the sea levels due to melting ice icebergs and stuff in the last of Ice Age. You are going to sink under the ocean and your achievement is going to be Atlantis. It was uh, the amazing Mando, I think. It was the fabulous Mando on the forums who suggested this and the devs loved it. So here we are. <laughs> it's a great achievement. So a good idea, Mr. Amazing Amando, uh, Mando. I'm oh, sorry. I don't quite remember the name. I wrote it down somewhere. Something with Amazing and Mando. So I said Amazing Mando. I apologize if that's not quite your name, but you know who you are. We know who you are. <laughs> so yeah, good idea there. 
Um, so, okay, so start to get uh, materials. Let me see. I've chalked out a few people to get tons of nuts so we have over the winter. Um, because we need to soon start to do the farms. But what is uh, just as important is to get up housing. So as you can see, we also have a lot of a new informative information in the user interface. And that is the how people are, are feeling uh, with regards to food, housing, overall unrest, and how the, the overall mood is for the tribe. So green is obviously the best for a uh, tribe mood. It's that basically everyone is happy or a, a very large percentage of the, the, the tribe is happy. And when you see the, uh, the blue on the work hours, you can see it uh, if you go to, to tribe page, then you can see that it, it has a, a black percentage showing. The black is the percentage of unrest. And when the um, icon is blue, it means that it's only a small percent that is unhappy with the work hours. And I guarantee you 150%, that doesn't exist, 100% that anyone who complains at the moment are those with fitness or will reductions. Okay. So let's get, uh, you can also see very clearly the percentage on the housing uh, or what kind of uh, appeasement it gives. So the plus is the appeasement it gives. And if it's red and minus, it means it will take away your peace. It is the adding of unrest. Anything minus adds unrest. The worst thing you can do is still the same as it used to be is to let people sleep in the open. Just have a few fireplaces chucked down. It is a ton better than sleeping in the open. So yeah, okay, that's my groups there. So uh, the migrants came then and gave me some lovely threshers and luckily I had extra pelt, which is good, extra leather. don't know how I got extra leather, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I won't say no. <laughs> right. Also, what we can see now is you can see who is lacking any kind of housing. You will see a fireplace does not count as housing, nor does sleeping in the open. That's not housing. So when you see the, the red house, on your try page it means that someone is lacking a proper sleeping arrangement and then you will see the amount of people that lack so if you hover over it you will see that we are now lacking like i don't know 11 and uh, that means that 11 people are sleeping by the fireplace or in the open so this is a one way of us to make sure that we have enough housing instead of having to count all the sleep buttons uh, you know the things we had to do before so this is a big improvement actually for someone who, who is very poor at counting at uh, me this is good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let me see. I have the groups. Um, oh, I need to remember to make the gravestones. And I'm going to let those who uh, are collecting stones actually make the gravestones as well. They can get the stone and also do the graves at the same time. Because we soon need to start focusing on the farms. Also, the... Uh, bones that we normally get from animals they are now edible well not the bones per se but the bone marrow inside so what happens is that when the hunter there are two options to how to get the bone marrow um, none of them are really visible as such unless you go close to see what the hunters are doing you can see that they are um, of course uh, slaughtering the animal they have uh, hunted and then um, the bones are broken up and then um, the tribe goes to pick them up and place them in a pile, you know, wherever you've placed their storage. And the people who um, eat uh, the bones, they will just take them to the fire and then break them open and then uh, scoop out the bone marrow. It's very nutritious, but uh, not everybody's cup of tea. So people in the tribe does not like to eat the bone marrow from the bones, just so you know. So if you wonder, hmm, they're eating bones? No, it's not the bones, it's the bone marrow. They just take the entire bone with them to the fireplace or wherever they're sitting and just breaking it open and then scooping it out. So that's another food source. It's uh, 
For many countries, this is a delicacy that is used in many different kind of recipes, including Norway. In Norway, we actually put it in some of our meatballs and some soups. Uh, so yeah, it's um, very varied about what kind of food we like, but we already knew this. Uh, so yeah, bones can now uh, be uh, extracted bone marrow from and eaten in harder times because people will not choose to eat bones, trust me. They hate bones as much as they will hate or they do hate the roots that we already know. So the dislikes for food and the food preferences, they seem to be very much more streamlined now for everyone. So that everyone loves uh, all the things that are very fresh produce like berries, they love honeys, they love raw fish and raw meat and they also like dried meat and dried fish. Um, they are neutral to most the crops except eating the wheat or the flax grains, they don't like that. So yeah, but bread they love to bits. So if you have wheat you should quickly get up your bread ovens to make sure that you get a good yield from each two sheaves of wheat. Two sheaves of wheat grants 10 bread. So keep that in mind if you think that it's super uneconomical to have wheat because of all the workforce you need. You are also feeding your workforce very well with bread. So try to make sure that as few as possible eat the wheat grains but rather that they are getting the product of the ovens from the wheat grain because that is much better for them both um, what they prefer and also the amount of food that you're getting from these wheat grains so yeah that is uh, one of the things um, there are so many changes uh, uh, there are so many patches that has come out since the belief patch is it three or four it's quite a few I have tested them all but you know as I move on I take away all my notes from the older patch and then go on to the next patch so whatever I did before is often forgot because I need to focus on the new things but uh, I will probably uh, remember things as I go along and as I come into the situations where this is applicable and the changes that were made but it's been a lot of changes and of course everyone has noticed the increased uh, challenge to, to the game it was very 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 hard before the game pace was sorted and other things including the difficulties that we now have the three types of difficulties and even though i tested it and i did well i did 10 years on hardcore no problem but i know so much about the game and i have allowed myself to fail so much without giving up that i in the end uh, achieved success in what i'm doing that does not mean that i don't still fail because all tribes are different. You need to fiddle and then, you know, be careful with how you do things or, or you will have issues. And it, you know what? It's not uncommon to have famine every now and then. It was quite usual back then as well. So do not worry too much if you fail all the time. You will get there in the end. It's supposed to be hard. If you don't want to play hardcore, go beginners. It's so much easier. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, actually I find beginners are boring because and now I'm so used to, to tweaking the hardcore, to be a little bit hardcore, to be a bit unforgiving compared to beginners. And I think still that hardcore could be even more hardcore. But that's just me. I'm not sure how many will agree with me on that point, but I'm open for a discussion. <laughs> a small, small discussion with Baileys. Yeah, I'll take that any day. <laughs> Right, yeah, you can see the, the uh, icons in the tripaid stage. You can see we still like housing and you can see the hunter icon, which basically means that we, uh, we are lacking a few um, prey uh, numbers. So when the prey get low, each species, the, the game will inform you of where you could uh, choose to, to chill a bit on the hunting. So that's not a bad idea. Oh yeah, he's uh, complaining because he has to sleep by the big fireplace. Yeah, well, I'm building houses bit by bit. You have to accept it or leave. It's either or. I cannot accommodate a person and then let the rest of the tribe sleep in the open. It's better that you who have bad grades leave. I know that sounds really harsh, but you will have a sort of automatic uh, filtering system of those with very bad grades compared to those who have normal grades or no bad grades in the um, will or fitness uh, traits 
they will kind of leave on their own if you don't accommodate them all the time oops yeah it's the usual little mistake Ta-da! time for farms so the farms have been uh, decreased they have been halved so now instead of uh, 441 we have uh, 220 so it's 21 times 10 or whatever the 220 is the uh, maximum cells you can have per farm so however shape you want to put it in that's all up to you i like the rectangular one but sometimes uh, you get more the squarish one ish square ish a bit like the squirgle the squirgle project so uh, what i do to start with with the farms you don't have to do this this is just how i do it however you make it happen it's also good there's no one single way to do things here so just uh, if you have a successful way of making your farms stick to it it's all good so what I, but I, what I do is that I let the tribe clear the farms and then I assign them to farmers group to make sure that not the entire tribe is running to the farms and this is also why I only have a maximum of 30 wooden spears to make sure that not everyone runs to tail because farming work has a very very high priority in the game which they should to be honest because it is farm or death basically in hardcore so yeah let the uh the tribe do the initial clearing let get up these so at some point here i'm going to um show you how you can recover from too few uh, from maintenance issues so I'm gonna on purpose uh, gather what used to be enough before but is no longer enough so you can see what happens when you fail on your resources cause the balance that you need to keep between work for workforce and income versus usage is extremely precarious if you mess this up you will need uh, some type of recovery method to be get back on track the problem with uh, having issues with your maintenance while you're doing your farms is that the game no longer is forgiving people will leave you if someone who's used to sleeping in normal huts for a year or so or even half a year suddenly has to sleep by the fireplace or in the open they are, are so likely to leave you even though they might not have any particularly bad grades they can go so annoyed that they actually leave you if it, this goes on long term they will not accept not having proper housing and it doesn't help that in hardcore we have an earlier grade out option of housing than we have in all the other difficulties in beginners or expert hardcore has an, uh, a, a faster showing grade out housing so for instance you can land in default neo and already have the roundhouse grayed out to piss your people off even more yeah this is hardcore and it's done on purpose i know right it's evil but i have to admit i love it <laughs> And uh, each item that is supposed to give uh, appeasement to a rest in hardcore is diminished. So you have a lot less appeasement on everything compared to experts and to beginners. So the hardcore part is multifaceted. It's not only that you have very little food. It is also everything else, tribe behavior, tribe reactions, environment reactions, punishment for not getting up farms punishment of not getting up enough farms etc etc and of course the yield on cultivated farmland is much much diminished everything is hard seriously hard i love it i have to admit i love it i'm a sucker for these hardcore stuffs like the challenge let me see okay now we have just a few without housing we are getting there so i just lack a few ropes now to get more let's see what these guys bring yeah you have nothing you do have increase i will take you even though you have a, a will reduction trait so you might leave me in a few years but hey indecisive yeah so what is this no it's fairly low on will i shouldn't worry too much right so uh, let's not muck about too much with work hours when you don't have enough 
proper housing for everyone. So at all costs, avoid the Woo! combos. They are horrendous and normal people will leave you with combos. Be careful with combos. Make sure you have enough graves. Make sure you have enough housing. And for God's sakes, do not ration anyone while you are building houses or doing the farms. They will be so pissed off. Okay, so we basically have one P. So I have reduced the size of the farms. I'm just going to do it this year. Next year, they can keep working to get more skills. And uh, we don't have any flax we can plant because flax needs like all the other seeds they need one full unit before the farmers are going to take them into the um, to the fields so we will not get flax next year but that is not a bad thing because uh, flax is not supposed to be for food it's supposed to be for fiber and we basically just started so we are not going to need it as such and uh, we don't have enough uh, beets either so that one has also been reduced so everything that we're lacking has been reduced but that's a start, isn't it? We get a few things and then next season we are going to plant more and more and more. And then we have in the end full farms. So this is going to be okay. So you can see now the nuts because I've focused on the nuts to have them over winter and spring while we are doing all the work so that uh, people have plenty of food. Um, let me see. I don't put on too high fishing or too high hunting. Um, I would like to pause fishing as quickly as possible as soon as we have more cultivated yield in the house we are going to uh, to chill on the fishing because uh, fishing I would like to use as a sort of um, uh, emergency source resource to use if the f fields fail if the, the year fails then yeah have to to put on the fishermen but i also need to make sure that there are some fishing going on so the skills can be kept uh, up because you have a lot less time now to to learn all the skills before the max skill holder dies so when i talk about the combinations uh, the combos it is a combination of unrest you have several types of unrest that your people will grow in the um, applicable circumstances you have lack of food you have lack of housing you have uh, work hours and you also have lack of religion or more specifically graves uh, any combo of these is never a good idea so if you have one combo you need to be extremely careful to get not get another type that will add to any kind of already existing combination of unrest if you have people with very poor grades in fitness and uh, and also um, will, you are very likely going to lose them if also some of their wills are a bit high. So if you have, say you have very low food, please do not add more combos to the already existing unrest. Because the second you have a combo, the um, possibility or the likeliness of people leaving, also the normal ones are immediately skyrocketing. So one problem at a time is a quite simple way to put it. If you have high work hours, make sure you have enough food before you do it and make sure everyone has a place to sleep. Then there's only one type of unrest. If you then go low on food and people start to go really hungry, then you will automatically have a combination and that is bad in all circumstances. People who have a very little bad grades or are very strong in some areas, they tend to survive or accept a lot better a lot of the things that is happening but be very very careful with the combos so yeah uh, let's see three houses now okay still have around six six people or so lacking a place to sleep but we do have the best fireplaces so the reduction is quite a bit higher than in the open or the small fireplaces so the yield this year will be very low because of course everything is reduced on hardcore you basically have one wheat or less i have less than one wheat because remember that one uh, sheave of wheat now does not produce a full grain it only produces half a grain everything is reduced <laughs> so, yeah it's, it's a lot harder and uh, we have um some uh, changes uh, to the notification system as well for instance instead of being 
flown to the area where the migrants are coming when they want to join your tribe. You just have a notification and then you can click yes or no or accept or reject. And then the notification comes to, to where it normally comes and you can check out the people that have just joined your tribe. You will not be swooshed over to the um, area where they enter at the edge of the map because that was could be rather annoying. So they have changed that and that is a good thing. Okay, so I'm getting up uh, enough housing, I think, to remove the uh, one fireplace and I have two stone graves. Uh, I will soon be needing those. I'm going to have to add more, but uh, one step at a time. Uh, get up one more because I have 200 plus and I have 10 ropes. So normally with uh, roughly six huts, uh, you would have roughly 300 straw. But that's not going to work anymore because the time is so hastened that uh, so are the repairs. So we're going to see how that goes when I do it the old way. And then we're going to see how bad it gets when uh, we have too little materials for maintenance and repairs. Yeah, I see you stealing my flipping crops. Time to get off some some fences and stuff but you know the, the hunters will take care of that one <laughs> I hope <laughs> the hunters have been greatly improved as well they no longer um, keep going to the place where the animal was they will update themselves as soon as they are getting a bit closer to where the animal used to be they will immediately reorient themselves to run directly to the animal and this happens in an instant every time so you will see more or less immediate reactions if the prey changes direction so will the hunter and the prey has become a lot more scared of humans so the hunters have to work harder i recommend get bows get bows even though they seem to be um uh, doing worse but you will not have to do so much running as you will have to do with the spears the spears kill faster but you're losing that anyway in the amount of times you have to run after the prey because the prey will avoid you at all costs it will not stop until it's uh, exhausted which is annoyingly correct but uh, yeah so you suppose because then you can be ranged and still kill them but you need to do more shooting so yeah how about you no that's a no yeah that's a yes i'll take those anything that has a skill upgrade i will take no ifs and buts about it so you can see the notification down there you can see that you can click those and then check them out instead of being chucked over to the place where they entered okay so uh, also new notification or new um colors on items when they are in need of repair but still working they will be blue so that means that people can still sleep in the huts and stuff like that but when they turn a yellow that means they are uh, starting to get broken and when they are red they are no longer usable so um, this is also something you need to be really careful about with your fences as soon as they go red it means that animals can get into your fields just be aware have enough materials to always keep your fences up to date around your farms Another change is that the regional map is twice as large. This means that you have a much larger area where you can migrate in. So yeah, you can now cross countries, several countries perhaps, if you go to Liechtenstein and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, if you get a boat, you can swim from the south coast of England over to France, if you like. <laughs> So that is a good thing too. We have a much larger space where we can play around and migrate. Okay, so basically the farms are sorted and the first harvest is coming in. So now we're gonna get a bit more beets so we can save them and get uh, our maxed out farm next season. I'm gonna take down my hunters a little bit and also my fishermen because now we're gonna get uh, waste on the food unless we chill a bit on those. Uh, so the uh, starter feast year is now over, so now the amount of food will be less. 
So, um, but as soon as you have enough cultivated farms to to keep your tribe happy and and uh, well fed, you should take uh, limits on any kind of wild produce that you're bringing to camp. Um, so I have uh, you done some calculations on the the uh, amount of food needed per member, and uh, each member will need roughly between 26 and 30 units of food per year. So that means that one maxed out farm with max yield, say beets or peas, will feed approximately 10 members. So if you are, say we are now 30 plus, so say 40, that means uh, in order to feed everyone, I will need to get up four farms of max yield. So for the first year, that is not possible, which is why it is so important to utilize their starter feast and save up food so you can get uh, the farms uh, that you need up and running. The first year is, is quite forgiving with regards to food because you do have the starter feast. So now I'm going to... Oh, it's going to be issues now, isn't it? Because there will be 15 million farms that need to merge into one year. What the heck? Let me see. Yeah, just leave it. Let's see if I can get a full one. Probably can't. Go on. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Let's get the beets. Now they are full. So in order to in order to duh, in order to um, get uh, the farm done in time, you can no longer rely on four people because you just you are running out of time. So you have to rely on twice the amount of workers as you used to. So this one normally would take like I don't know two workers. You now need four times that to fill out this 220 field so you're going to need eight workers you could be lucky and have high uh, agriculture and people who are high in agriculture working on this but in the start that's not going to happen you need to have more workers until they get become more proficient in the agriculture skill then you can start to reduce but you need to pay attention to this yourself and see how it goes per year as they learn in the end you could go down to having only four again if you are having really good people this is not a, a, a guarantee you need to to see how your tribe is because some tribes will be okay with uh, with only four or five workers while others will need more pending their skills it's just it is what it is Sure, I'll take you guys. Why not? Look at that. I'm getting here big reed hearts. Right. So there's quite a, a, a difference in in uh, happiness or unrest uh, appeasement. But uh, I'm going to get down some more straw and then we're going to also start saving up some, some reed. So I'm going to leave those at 300 and then I'm going to get these at 150. No, 300. I have double, just to be sure. I will probably have to up them soon. But for now, I'm going to leave them like they used to be in the old days. If you had six straw, big straw huts, you needed roughly 300 per year of straw for the maintenance. So with the new game pace, that is going to seem like they are constantly in need of repairs, but of course they are not. Okay, let's get these with the crops. So the priority system on your storage areas has changed. So whatever you place priority on, the tribe will adhere to. So if you have a locked storage area with so-and-so limit for your seeds, if you place that on max priority, you will always have your gatherers going to that storage first. And whatever comes after will go to those who have less priority. So that is why I do not up any priority on the two pits I just made for beets and uh, peas because that means that then the um, harvest will first go to those that are locked and have high priority and then they will be coming to the ones that are 
having a neutral priority. Yeah. And yeah, they both have increase in skills. So, uh, but then some of them have uh, they have some some bad grades. But I'll take it anyway. If it gets too bad for them, they can leave. So now we can do bone harpoons. So I'll happily do those. But we need bones. We do have bones, but not like a ton. But there you go. I've turned down the taken down the hunters and the fishermen, so there won't be too much of uh, of that. But there will be some, of course. Let's get up um, armor group for the wheat as well. We have, I said one we have, we have one wheat. <laughs> one wheat grain. And you are. Okay, I'm going to do those later. But let me see how many do I have? Six. Yeah. Probably get those sorted as well. Let's get the uh, defenses and done and stuff. Okay then, yeah, it's not going to be pretty, and I'm also going to make space for uh, for flax farm because we're going to get flax as well as soon as we have one full unit. Yeah, time for flax farm. <laughs> we have half a unit. The uh, the wild crop yield is atrocious, <laughs> as we can clearly see. <laughs> So we're going to cover the entire uh, beat, that's for sure. Let's see, I have, yeah, six peas. I could probably get this sorted now into one full one. Look at that one, didn't want to. Yep. Ta-da. Yeah, that's my wheat. Yeah, that's good. So let's see how well they do with four. Four should be enough for the piece and the wheat for sure. The wheat can even go down to one. You have you have one wheat unit. I mean, <laughs> it works on going to spend on one. Let me see, because uh, these are now starting to lack, um, lack materials because they are clearing the farms but now there's uh it's under the control of the farmers group so it should be better why are you complaining probably work hours or whatnot mm. so we don't have more wheat we don't have more flax and we don't have more beets the beets is less important because we have enough beets to to seed at least two farms and it won't really go down as such it will instead go up So, so the baby is uh, not counted yet. Oh, I lack graves. Shoot me. Uh, yeah, I'll take him. I need to get some graves done. You can see there's a warning system. You can see the skull that is red. It means that there's a tomb lacking. And if you hover it, you will see how many tombs are lacking. So the, the, the UI system that provides information about tribe status is very much increased and we only have stone graves so there so sometimes you see that even though you don't have famine or you don't have low food you can see that sometimes in the morning there is a yellow food bowl that means that People who have slept through the night are waking up very hungry. Oh my goodness, look at all these kids. If we don't get a grave up quickly, they are going to whinge. But luckily, luckily we don't have any combos really going. A small combos only. Look at all the animals there. They're very low, the, the starter stock in a hardcore, very low. So we're not going to get a ton of, of, of animals to kill. Yeah, just putting them on the boars and the hares for now because we don't need the food as such, but we will need the leather. Just, oh, yeah. 
What about you? Yeah, you're mine. I'll take you. The three now need housing, but I need to get up these. You guys will have to rotate on the housing for now. Have to get up the graves so the combos do not keep growing because it is progressive and we will keep uh, going up and up and up. Even though they have no bad grades, they can leave you if you have a bad combination. So get up the graves. Yep. So that's the thing also with this pace, people are dying so quickly. So, yeah, it's quite fast. Look how hard they're working. <laughs> it looks weird with full speed when they're working like that. <laughs> it looks really weird. <laughs> we got new trees as well. We got pine trees. Um, it's the, the type that has a big crown and um, a long stem. I think it's the European black pine, I think, and it's very prevalent in the south, not so much in the north. There are, are different types of pines normally in the north, but we only have the more southern one. And they have a very covering foliage. So if you have too many of them around where you want to camp, it's like it's a blanket over your camp. So uh, I, chuck, I chop them down because you can't really see anything above them. You need to go down to ground level in order to see. So, Right, look at them going. Yeah. So that's uh, five big straw huts. Okay. So the thing is with one full unit, when it goes below one and you're not, or your farmer is not done seeding, then he will not go the day after to take that half unit and start farming it or start seeding it because they don't, they don't do that. Um, I'm not quite sure why they are not, but I think there are some technical issues with trying to code the half units. So for now, we just have to accept that they need one full unit in order to start seeding. Look at my uh, fences, they're all blue, so they're still protecting. But they will need some uh, repairs very, very shortly. And there's not too much farm work to be done now, so they should soon have time for that. Okay, so I have the, the graves needed. There were two graves that was lacking. So I'm just adding extra and this one also needs uh, some straw. I'm going to soon have to adjust my groups again. There's a lot of adjusting in, in hardcore based on the environment and how your tribe reacts and how they work or don't work for that matter. So you need to keep a, a, an eye on your groups all the time and mix and tricks to get a good balance. It's difficult to get a good balance. I feel it's always been difficult to find a good balance to start with because the traps are so flipping individual. The environment is so different from each time. I, I don't think I've ever had a tribe that has been exactly the same, exactly the same environment and stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's a thing we need to adjust based on where we are and what tribe you have. That's all there is to it. Yep, because it takes, uh, uh, it normally took like one in-game year to, you know, uh, get graves or get graves free again. So, yeah. So now they are dying much faster, so we needed to uh, decrease the the longevity of corpses of bodies in the grave you had to half them otherwise we would need a good zillion graves and they can't have that but the first few years are always a bit tactic and then it will start to rotate in the graves so that's uh, that's a good thing
Okay, I'm gonna add one more grave. Just to be on the safe side and let the tribe take care of it so the stone gathering group can focus on getting more stone. Because we're gonna need more graves, there's no doubt about it. It's just that they cost 25 stones per grave, so it's uh, quite costly. But it's the only option we have and we cannot um, skimp on the graves. People need to have graves for their loved ones or they will retaliate by leaving or, you know, making life very sour for you. Look at us having, is it seven? Seven wheat? Yay, go us. Could have as much as three full units next next uh, season to plant. I mean, the luxury. Yeah, hardcore luxury. <laughs> oh, more migrants, sure. Yeah. And yeah, let's do this. Take them. She has a bad grade though, but that's fine, that's fine. Oh, we got sets of baskets. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, a new leader. Sure. Sure. So these are blue, so they are still usable. Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> Half a day. <laughs> Which is actually a few weeks. The pace is insane. I mean, seriously. We are probably going to get options to choose pace as well. So for those that do not like this quick pace, you will probably get options to do it a bit more normal pace or what we are used to, to put it like that. So we shall see. We shall see what happens. Okay, so we are year, is it year two now? The, uh, the piece only a few cells were not done the rest were actually done which is great so this is good need to uh, let me see get some work hours up and these guys are are they hungry what's the matter oh she's got uh, bad grades more migrants yeah, I'll take you. I will take you. So now we have only 300 maintenance number on the straws and we can see it is too little. So we're going to struggle a bit here. So it, it might not be using more materials for maintenance but the time you have to get the materials it's very very diminished it's cut in four so you have to do at least twice as much income of the materials in order to keep afloat with all the repairs while you are doing all your farm work farm work takes between 75 and 80 percent of your time in Neolithic hardcore with this uh, pace. There is no doubt about it. It's uh, super, it can be super stressful. Very fast paced work. And you should perhaps normally play in slow. Play slowly to, uh, to get a better control, to feel better in control. But I just, I'm allergic to playing slow. My, my my nose starts frowning when I do. It's just a, an allergic reaction to playing slow. It is what it is. <laughs> Although I, I do enjoy miso and the slow pace of miso, but I always want the speed to be quick. Oh, she's also not happy, is she? Yeah, we have normal work hours. But she has to sleep by the fireplace or in the pelt She doesn't like that at all, does she? Dang, so many migrants. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, you're good. You're good. I'll take you. Right. So there's only a few 
that are free to join the uh, strat group so we are quite busy very busy tribe let me see how you're doing yeah so we're getting good amounts of of beats now and the uh, the the wheat and the peas will also increase a bit slowly but they will increase I still don't have enough uh, flax seeds to warrant a flax farm so that will still have to wait though but I'm going to make another one for beets to increase because we are now 40 ish so I will need at least four farms I need to get those up so we are 46 so I need five farms with max yield plus minus so yeah so we still have some wild produce we are relying on while well, we are incrementally incrementally increasing our farms let's do that okay then three graves yeah that's fine see let's be smart add some more because I have tons of elder people and they will die soon I actually prefer that the pregnancies are low because that means you can control your population better because you can reject migrants you don't have to accept all migrants you know you can reject them you can be picky allow yourself to be picky if you don't want an explosive population that is completely fine let's get some gates and the very end I think is a good idea so you have some more places to go in and out yeah so I'm gonna add more farms I still lack housing and you can see the yellow bowl and it just turned blue because people woke up in the morning and uh, started eating very early oh more migrants yeah, let's have a look. Yes, you are a yes. You would be a no, but your friend is, uh, mm, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I take everything. Oh, look at that. Yeah, duh. Yeah, that's good. I won't be needing uh, the storehouses yet. I will take the bows, though for my hunters and the odd confused fishermen who keep going for the hunter tools when they have just as good tools themselves actually better tools than the hunter tools but sometimes they take the bow or the spears which is really weird but it kind of means that the others the other tools have been a bit too busy for them or too far away there's a lot of factors playing in behind reasonings the reasonings behind why every individual do what the individual does there's always a reason why they act against what we find normal let's chuck down some more huts see it's taking a long time to get the huts right same time as you are getting up everything else and of course the farms so there is a, a certain balance you need to find we're doing the farms getting housing getting materials doing the farms you know and getting more housing getting more materials and then doing the farms so it's this constant agenda that you cannot skimp on you cannot be sloppy because you will lose people I'm not expecting to go through this without having anyone leaving because sometimes you do get combinations of unrest that makes people leave especially if you have people with the, the weak grades the fitness reductions or the will reductions you will have people leave and but like I said earlier it's an automatic filtering system get rid of those that do not want to work get rid of those that complain about work hours all the time without having to kick them it's a, it's a inbuilt uh, kick unwanted individuals from tribe option <laughs> that sounds very harsh very harsh it's a good thing it's only a game uh, yeah you are going to be peace because we have plenty peace now we have plenty beats so now we have five farms for our tribe just need to up the the wheat more and more and more and as soon as we have enough wheat I'm going to add the ovens and mills 
I don't even remember if I have ovens in mills. We will find out. So the population, uh, when all the adults you have to start with is growing older, you will have a small dip in population rather than an increase. And this is also you or me in this case, uh, re re rejecting migrants that would keep this number up. But um, it will it will balance out. It doesn't matter if you have a small dip in your population or a small increase as long as it's the trend as long as the trend is not always down so look at the trend and not at the individual years we have several that need some repairs how are we doing with graves so i have one two three four and now three yeah okay okay so keeping fishermen on one even though i don't really need the fish to make sure that the skills don't drop too bad so I placed it on 600 just to get it up for this time. And then you saw what happened when we only had 300. We had so much huts in this repair. So I added it to the double of what we normally have and then it sorted itself. So just that, remember that with this game pace, you need to have twice the amount because you don't have time to gather only 300 at a time get get the double then you will have throughout the farming work as well so this is a way you can recover just increase and increase and uh, you can for a short amount of time up your work hours but be very very careful with doing it prolonged because although default work hours are neutral for everyone without any reductions in their fitness or their will if you have it uh, increased too long, even the normals will start to falter. They will start to feel the effects on their health and they will start to, to complain. And by the time the normals are feeling the effect, the weaker ones will have long given up and very likely left your tribe or become sick and die. So, yeah, be, be careful with these things. It's extra, extra bad on hardcore because everyone is three times angrier and they leave three times faster. And yeah, they are extremely uh, difficult, <laughs> very difficult to, to handle. Okay, so we're getting a few more wheat this year. Let's get up the, the nice hut. So people can rotate in that one and get rid of some unrest because that one will take away quite a bit unrest, which is good. Let's get up um, some hunting so we can get some more food in. I think I prefer to have it on boars and hares only, to be honest, and be with the others. I'm so used to it. It takes uh, some time to get used to hunting everything. I don't like hunting everything. I do like to have the flocks roaming free and then I just strip them when they die from old age. Oh, is that a tree coming up? A sneaky little tree. Fine. Fine. Okay, so let's see how they do. Yeah, I'm up to six. I probably should go to eight now to get the full, full farm. And that will cost a lot of people. So we are likely going to have some um, issues with repairs. Yeah. We will just have to wait and see how it goes and then adjust and recover. Adjust and recover. Recover, adjust, adjust, adjust. If you, if you try to uh, create a, a, some rules of thumb for um, hardcore uh, play, I think it, the first thing you should always do is to uh, get comfort for people. Because you do have time to wait a little bit before you need to start the farms. You know, in Missalating and Isis, you can just migrate as you see fit. You have, you have no limitation on how often you can migrate. You can basically migrate once a year and get constant starter fees based on your tribe size. Because that is also a new, oh, that one was great. I'll, I'll take these, but look at the horrendous grades. Oh my goodness. Anyway, 
the tribe size decides the amount of food the locality will have so it's not like you're going to die from starvation if you are going from one place that has enough food for 50 and then you are 150 and you don't get enough food on the next place it doesn't work like that the the system has been changed to accommodate your tribe size for the start of feast and then the production years as they diminish uh, there's a certain calculation i don't know all about it but uh, i do know that it works in in the game so if you are a tribe of 50 and you are say you are in the late miso about to go into neo but you don't have farms you will need to migrate and when you have done the start of feast the uh, um the production years are of course harder to survive but you have the option to migrate so if you migrate with 55 people you will in the next locality find food for 55 people but of course you need to do it right to get this food and to not waste it because the next year you will not have the same amounts as you had on the start of year so you will basically have to follow your food but this is exactly what they did back in the day isn't it they followed the food it is authentic so neo is the unforgiving one because neo demands that you have farms otherwise you will keep migrating and and it's not you know most of us do not want to keep migrating in the neolithic timeline although we do it quite regularly I, I i can easily migrate with 200 people you know every 20 years or so but that is because i'm running out of critical resources on such as a fine raw stone which is the first thing to go if you need to use a lot of, of access for the timber <clears throat> but uh, trading will sort that and certainly raiding will sort that so that is only a temporary setback with regards to lack of critical resources so yeah the uh, the amount of food you will find in any place you lo you locate to is calculated based on your current tribe size so yeah and of course when you are in we are hardcore you will have very small amounts of food let's get these up quickly quickly okay that one is almost done okay so we got a bit more wheat this time it's kind of like triple since last time do we have 20 perhaps of the wheat yeah and the beets are done good going to get the fences up on on this one as well and then remove the uh, middle fences so they are all connected bit by bit i'm going to wait till these have been repaired because those are not supposed to be taken down because we yeah we are lacking graves and some people are a bit unhappy about the workouts you can see the yellow with the black circle the yellow circle with the black uh, triangle that's the percentage of unhappy people regarding work hours so the bigger it gets the more color it change and poof you have people leaving because they're overworked so be careful with that it's easy to pay attention to now because now you can see the overall in the state on the tribe page so yeah those down it's a good thing with that with these fences is there are so few materials it's quick to add and quick to take down so I'm not going to spend a, a lot of uh, time on it there are uh, some other new things with the user interface for instance up to the right side corner you have the uh, key uh, he helps and also the tutorial so you don't have to go into the options to find the tutorial anymore you just basically click the tutorial on top right of your screen and then you will have it and also to the left is what we normally used to do with escape we just press escape to get get game menu and everything and now we just click that one to the top to the top left and then we have same effect so that is an improvement absolutely So they are repairing what I'm going to tear down in a minute anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's 
get it up then. Do the fencing. I'm going to go all the way because I'm going to add more, of course. There will be some blacks at least there and then some, some more perhaps. So year three, we have housing for everyone. We still have not found the um, the balance with the graves yet, because they seem to be filled the second it's recirculated constantly. We have one read heart. That's fine. That's fine. There's not a lot of need to mess around with the policies too much so the work work uh, hours are okay it's like the the percentage there it's uh, it's yellow if you look at the yellow circle which is the work hours and how your tribe is reacting to them it is still yellow so it's not precarious and whoever it is that is complaining are those with the bad grades and if they want to leave they can do so i am not going to accommodate them because we have an okay balance now and then we just need to see how it goes with the maintenance because uh, we can't put it on what we normally did we have to have it increased due to the uh, shortened time we have to to get them out so they can't really be resting at all they need to just keep going and going and constantly have several hundred uh, straw in because uh, straw is what we are using the most isn't it reed will be the least also the um, roundhouses have had a change in their material they are no longer needing any um, reed to be built they just need a straw which is again very good so this is good okay let's get these down as well there is still this uh, small issue when you have created uh, fences that have different angles going into each other if you remove one of them the the connection point is broken and the thing is it's only a delayed connection break after a few days they will merge together again with whatever they have to merge with and then it's again safe it's um a bit odd that we still have it but uh there are workarounds for it it's one of those things, so those things that seems to be really difficult to code correctly or something, something. I know nothing about these things. I just know how it works out in the game. So if you want to take away everything instead of leaving the last one to not break the connection, uh, you need to make sure that you have your hunters ready to kill whatever comes inside. And then after a few days or so, they will have a full connection again. So that's good. So the, um, the the wheat or the, the grains or the seeds you need to sell is still the same. You don't need more than, um, it used to be one unit or one unit per 40 cells. And it is roughly there and thereabouts, a little bit less because they've made it more wasteful if you have less skills. And of course, more wasteful if you don't have proper tools. So there's, it's, it's better to, to just leave it on double of what you normally use, just to make sure that you get covered or even more, if you like. If you have a lot of clumsy people, a lot of people who are not skillful and also people with very low agriculture doing your, your planting, you could be using a lot more seed. So always have a bit extra. So one, um, fully maxed out beet farm can now uh, depending on what region you are in the in the in europe a grant up to 250 or even more based on where you are per per season so this is good um it's not too diminished you, you can easily manage to to keep uh, your tribe alive even if you are around 100 150 you can do it if you don't use too many farms that are lower yield such as flax flax is very low yield and should basically only be used for for fiber and the the odd weird snacks for whoever likes it which is basically none in my tribe nobody likes flax grain in my tribe yeah 
but uh, it's up to you to make that balance with your tribe because it seemed very visibly individual in, in hardcore the, the the punishment for everything that is not optimum is very severe uh, you will notice that when you play yourself if you have a, a crap tribe you end up using a lot more seeds you end up being slower on everything i'm gonna deny those i think oh, i don't want those sorry go to the next tribe i don't mind you being so poor in your skills i don't want to have an explosive population because we have an okay balance at the moment oh, three graves yeah let me see So we have 17 elderly. I think we're all right with that. We can probably go down on the work hours as well, because planting is well done and harvesting is on. And yeah, that's good. So the reason they are slow with taking down all the fencing is because it has zero priority. It has neutral. So in time, it is not precarious at all. It's fine if they spend a bit longer. So now we are one, two, three, four, five, and six with the wheat or with the flax. I don't really count flax as a full farm for food. So if you don't count uh, the flax, you have five as we have 40 plus people. So I would always always like to add another extra farm if you're not fully say you have five farms but you are only 42 like or 41 now that we are I always add one extra just in case just in case but you need to balance your workforce and you need to have twice the amount of resources for maintenance in camp time goes so fast you know, the time has been quadrupled, but uh, we are not doing everything in quadruple speed. We are not doing everything in quadruple amounts. So we need to accommodate that. We need to adjust our workforce, our, our income based on, on that. So if everything had been increased equally, we would still only need 300 straw, wouldn't we? Because they would be quick enough and to get the materials we needed per repairs. But... It isn't. It's hardcore, so everything is slower and harder. It is it's exactly as it should be, in my opinion. We can make it even harder if I get my will, which I probably won't, but there you go. So normally on non-hardcore difficulty, I would have started uh, creating uh, the bigger religious structures already like the temple men here and stuff for praying to to get higher appeasement and to get it quicker but uh, there just is no time for dinky doinkies i just have to stick to our, our complete and, and, and utter comfort in the here and now survival and appeasement so food housing graves that is the order and then the offerings will have to do if you don't have the work hours too high, they will manage to get the maximum prey effect of the offerings and that will keep them from leaving, at least the normal ones. The thing is, if you have these bad grades in the combination and you get also an unrest combination, they are going to leave. So if you can manage somehow to keep the combinations, uh, the numbers very low or the amount of combinations very low and preferably both low, you won't really have so many issues with people leaving. But in hardcore, you are never guaranteed anything. Never. It can be so different about how your tribe reacts, how the environment is behaving towards you. So, yeah. You will have to just use the various methods of uh, keeping unrest in check. So many migrants. No, I don't want you. Gosh. Did you see her traits? Her uh, grades? Goodness me. We have enough females. We have enough. Look at all the snow. Well, it is winter. So that is good. I like 
winter. Winter is nice. Three, six. So we have seven straw huts now and one reed. And that seemed to be actually seems to be sufficient to keep them okay and the few that have any kind of unrest are those with bad grades so i'm quite happy with this i'm quite happy with this uh, result um i'm not expecting everyone to be constantly happy but you can see the the, the tribe overall happiness is green so it means that you're doing you're doing it right yeah because it's impossible to please all all the time unless you are accommodating those with bad grades and turn basically off all work hours so they just sit on their bum all day okay new leader yeah so yeah we can't do that we must accommodate the majority and not the minority i'm gonna put uh, max work eight so everyone chips in you look good i'll take you for your stone working Yep, that's good. Well, I'm going to leave everything as it is. I'm just going to increase the labor age. Because we have, uh, we have enough food. We have uh, housing. And we have uh, overall happy, happy tribe. So we can uh, fiddle a bit with some of the policies. No problem. They are still, um, they seem efficient still, the farmers. It's just that they have so little time to complete their tasks. So you need to up the workforce or the farmers per group to um, manage the uh, farms before the season for planting and stuff is over. So the, the, the devs have added one more uh, planting uh, season. Oh, it's not season, but planting month because it was too little with only two. Because normally they start uh, tilling in uh, planting in February, and by March it's over. So instead, they started both the tilling and the planting in January to make sure that we we could actually manage to do a full farm without using 30 farmers for a farm which is quite insane so they upped it to three planting months and three tilling months so that means effectively three days of of tilling and planting on this pace it used to be four with of course lower speed lower pace Let's get a few more Yep. Okay. So now it's just uh, to pay attention to what is going on and uh, make sure that nothing goes titty up. And if it does, we need to recover. So it took quite a few years to get one flax seed. <laughs> uh, yeah, patience is uh, definitely a virtue on hardcore. You are being punished constantly with something. Always something going on. Just making sure they all have enough workers to complete their tasks. Look at that. Look at this. Now they're in the middle of planting and everything. And look at all the huts needing repairs. You just can't avoid it. You just It's just so difficult to calculate exactly when they will need repair. Because the farming takes up so much of your time. Now that we only have one day per month. That 80% of the time you will be sending half your tribe off to do farming it is it is hardcore it is what it is so yeah just getting enough materials while your tribe is doing the farms is quite a challenge this is why in the periods where you do not farm 20 percent of the time where you do not farm or do farm work it's 
prudent to increase the materials coming into camp to make sure that you're covered for two full repairs until the farmers are free again. Oh, plenty of my uh, fences are broken now. Not good. I still only have one hunter, meaning that there will be some animals coming close to camp, getting attracted by the crops. How much is that one lacking? Yeah, we'll lack for a bit. A bit overwork and a bit poor food. I'm going to open some of these to let them eat now that the planting is basically done. Everything goes so fast. So sometimes if you, you if you have a little bit too low food and you see that your farmers are basically finishing off one uh, farm with specific seeds, you can open up the, the lock storage areas to make sure that people are not going into starvation mode because starvation mode is also quicker more quicker happen happening on um, on hardcore everything is faster everything is more punishing everything is more hateful and hostile on hardcore <laughs> which you should be of course which you should be don't mind at all okay so going into recovery mode i've uh, up the work hours and uh, so we basically need to focus on getting more straw so i'm taking down some work spots in some of the groups um to give more um workers to the straw so this is a a, a, a mild recovery uh, and normally you would also place all buildings except one on pause and let them repair one at a time um, there is not one single way you have to do things. You can easily adjust as you see fit. Uh, whatever works is good. As long as it works, that's basically it. Let's get some baskets. You have plenty graves. They seem to be... be uh, starting to rotate now to circulate the graves now it only took four years crikey so let's see so i've placed those high yeah uh, fisherman still one hunters are up to two get a bit more food you see this constantly coming in um more straw now because I, I put up the work hours to to five out of six which is really high so the um, warning sign for people being overworked will increase but uh, that is a risk I'm willing to take to make sure that we don't get a bad combo because if they have both overwork which many of them already do because of their grades and also lacking proper housing yeah we are going to lose people not the normals, let that be said. It will be those with, with poor grades that will leave first. So people are lacking housing now because, because we lack straw. But yeah, I've uh, placed it on 600 and increased work hours and increased work spots for the straw group and that should basically balance it out sooner hopefully rather than later so let's see how it goes i'm just going to leave everyone open to be repaired instead of closing down one and one and one and just open one and one at a time i want to see how this goes because they should be efficient enough to sort everything within a short amount of time each and every one of these hearts but if it goes too slow i'll pause everything and just do one heart by one heart you, you can see whatever works best with your tribe it doesn't have to be this one way oh is that a blackberry i see hello blackberry a blackberry bush yes yes it's gonna gonna do the trick for sure <laughs> well i'm not complaining you see oh god we have so many not having housing now look 
so many people. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You guys. So this is also a way to to uh, help out, and that is to basically uh, grant other work work uh, groups the um, task as well to get. Uh, get straw or the material you lack but in different amounts than what the main group is getting so whatever you lack you can add to other groups to support groups or groups that normally have very little to do and they will help get material so this is also a sort of recovery method that you can use if you like you don't have to you can do as you see fit but i find this to be working quite well that others are pinching in uh, to to lend their work uh, workers to to certain materials. Oh yeah, she's leaving. She had to sleep in the open, and she is she is pissed off. Work hours and of course lack of housing. So yeah, and with bad grades, this is what you get. Accept it, lump it, or leave it. See if I can jiggle a bit more. No, I think I'm going to have to leave it as it is. I'm going to keep them up a bit longer. I might lose more with really bad grades, or bad grades at all, or a bad combo, which is this. Work hours and lack of housing. So it will be those with poor grades that will go first, but I already know this. So you can take down some of these farmers. Don't necessarily need all to be maxed out. Some will need increase those. I can't play around too much. Didn't really gain anything there, but uh, for, for material gathering, I mean, but uh, look at you also threatening. Yeah, with these exceptionally bad grades. You feel exploited, yeah? Aren't you? Fishing with bows, yeah. I guess everything else was busy. I don't have bones, do I? So Let's get uh, those instead. It's better than, than a kick in the teeth. Yeah, the rest is fine. So the, the, the thing to, to keep in mind with hardcore neolithic play is that you don't really have a lot of breaks and since i enjoy so much to play on full speed it is constant adjustment cost constant paying attention and constant doing things differently different methodologies okay so now we have managed to get uh, all the houses up to par with the um, methodology i used that means we can uh, soon chill a bit on the work hours. I'm going to keep it a little bit longer to get a higher uh, stock of straw into the camp. But this is one of the things you can do. This is a recovery method. You, there are several uh, and you are probably figured out many of these yourself because you've probably tried out a lot of things yourself, which is basically how you should do it, really figure stuff out. and. Um, so I absolutely am super in love with hardcore and although I do enjoy playing it on very fast speed which makes it a lot harder to pay attention to everything I find it more efficient uh, and for me efficiency is really really important um, if I can't find a balance then uh, it kind of tells me that something needs to be tweaked a little bit because normally I manage to find the balance even if it takes years I always manage to find a balance and I'm sure you guys have it the same it might take some time but you always find a balance and it doesn't have to be the same for each tribe obviously it isn't otherwise we would have the same method all the time but you see several methods can work so yeah I'm really pleased with the hardcore for sure and that is what I will always always play as hard as possible and now I could increase it a bit more to get more straw I want more straw in I want more stuff in 
Oh gosh, you did not look good. You are rejected. Sorry, Bubble. No, go to the next tribe. So this is really, really nice. And uh, you can see that the food is fine. We have the amount of farms we need for the uh, population we have. So roughly one max yield farm per 10 members should do it. Uh, be extremely careful with the rationing on hardcore because hardcore rationing is so punishing. It's one or two days and people are dying like flies. So be super, super, super careful with the rationing on hardcore. You can get away with a lot of stuff in beginners and to a certain degree expert, but you get away with very little in hardcore. Basically, you get away with nothing. Everything you do is risk. Everything you do is dangerous. <laughs> Every every fiddle and fiddle with the policies is bound to cause someone to be ticked off. Someone will complain no matter what you do. But I absolutely love it, and uh, it, I don't I don't mind as much at the years are going uh, so fast by because I think we will get an option soon to have it going slower if we want to. Uh, the devs are giving players more and more options to choose exactly, pinpointing exactly how they want their game to be, the feel of the game, the gameplay, the, the playability. So this is also part of the work that is being done for release, that it is accommodating much more taste, the capacities and wishes from players with regards to game speed, game pace, and how they would like it to be. So yeah, I think this has been really fun and uh, I have managed 10 years with 117 population, but it has become harder after that. We have increased the difficulty on harder after that because I felt it was too easy to reach 100 population in default Neolithic timeline. So that has been done even harder. And I can notice it. The difference between expert and hardcore might not seem bad, but when you play long term, it will show itself with how unforgiving hardcore is. If you cock up in beginners, you won't really have any hard percussions. In expert, you get a bit more punished. In hardcore, it's deadly. So there is a big difference, even though you might not think of, if you have a good balance if you manage to get a good balance the difference won't show but the second you cock up it will show definitely definitely will show so yeah that was absolutely great and uh, I will also do a play along for beginners and also a proper playthrough on expert but expert is more normal so it won't really be uh, teaching anyone a lot except uh, uh, repeating what has been done that is new uh, that maybe not everyone is aware of or have noticed or maybe someone doesn't quite know how things work um, so yeah that will be coming uh, shortly uh, I do suspect though that the devs are planning on adding some more game control with regards to speed to the game so I am assuming that uh, the next video I will do with beginners and expert will contain this uh, game speed control that we are getting extra which I'm sure we are gonna get um, so hang in there thank you so much for watching also remember to give the developers your feedback your personal feedback whatever it may be good and bad they are welcoming everything and uh, it has been a blast playing again in this uh, patch and i hope to see you guys uh, next time until then have fun and take care